Hey everybody, this is Chris from Sorcerer. You're watching CMS TV. Metal. Aiken presents and I am Chris Aiken. That is the guy on the left. I know I'm an ugly motherfucker, but not quite to this level. Brand new band or brand new album. And here to talk all about it is the singer himself, Mr. Max Murder. Max, how are you, man? I'm good. It's blood opera, baby. It's blood opera. That's right. Absolutely. Well, tell us all about blood opera, man. Tell us what's going on with the band and how you came to be and all that stuff. Oh, man. Where to start? I mean, you know, uh, we were resurrected from uh, from from the earth, uh, and we came to cannibalize on the human souls because we believe that you know living is a true waste. Nobody knows what it's like to be dead until they really are. Uh, and we started actually out as a band for a Return of the Living Dead for all you horror fans out there uh, musical. Uh, that okay. was actually going to be put on in uh, in Ontario and then go kind of around the world. Uh, so we were going to be the soundtrack band for that. Uh, but that didn't come to fruition. Uh, and so the band just kind of went, you know, we're just a bunch of horror nerds and we were uh, we wanted to do something different. So we just started kind of playing music in the genre and writing our own uh, tracks based on the, the genre of films that we love and hold so dear right on well for a band like blood opera how difficult is it to find gigs i gotta imagine that a lot of bands would just be straight up afraid to play with you guys because of the whole theatrical thing you'll just make them look bad you know we we take we take it all with a grain of salt we do find that because uh Obviously, the horror metal market is a bit more niche uh, within the genre, I guess, that, um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of play with bands uh, and then we'll have an amazing night and be like, oh, like, why didn't they call us to play again? Uh, and it's like, you know, I think a lot of the schlock factor has to do with like, oh, you, you've seen it once, you've seen it all. Uh, but the cool thing about us is that, you know, every show is different. Um We'll disembowel someone at one show. We'll pull the pull the guts out of someone at another show. We will, uh, you know, spray. I'll spray blood out of my uh, out of my big fake cock uh, on another show. Uh, and it just, you know, it keeps it keeps things going. Kid, the kids need to be entertained these days. So, you know, we we've got a lot of friends in the horror community. Uh, we're also different in the way that we will play you know, uh, comic convention after parties and things like that, which, uh, you know, kind of your average, uh, hair metal band or whatever is not necessarily going to be doing not to say that they don't have the interest, but, uh, where we lose, where we lose kind of in the general metal world, we gain with, uh, the horror fans and kind of the, uh, you know, the, the convention after parties and things like that. So, so yeah, we we have no we have no shortage of shows, which is good. So you know, 
Right on. That's awesome, man. Well, dude, how do you guys write music? Do you come up? I mean, is it written from a horror idea or does it start from a riff and then it builds? I mean, I mean, how does a band like this create music? Well, we used to just go kind of pick a movie. As you can see, I'm surrounded by, uh, sure. by VHS here. Uh, we're big, uh, big movie collectors. So we literally used to just, you know, uh, drink beers and then, you know, take, uh, pick our favorite movie and, and pick a line from it and focus in on it. Uh, because we're, because we're such big horror fans that, you know, kind of writing the tunes comes fairly naturally. Um, and we like to, you know, pick, pick like a specific genre within the horror genre. So say, you know, Italian horror, um, or sci-fi or whatever. And then we will, we'll elaborate on that. So we also, uh, you know, because we started as a cover band uh, sure. playing kind of soundtrack songs, it's kind of emerged from that. Like uh, it's, you know, writing originals, although it can be difficult, I guess, especially if there's already, you know, awesome songs on the soundtrack of that film that gives us, you know, the creative juices to kind of want to like, make it our own you know write something that's that's sure. more modern and bring that to the forefront because you know horror is uh, in the last 10 years especially become bigger than life uh and so you know every song we write people are, you know the kind of your average metal fan if i dare say uh you know might not even know that a song like the gates of hell is based on a lucio fulci film uh they're just like oh gates of hell sounds heavy metal sounds rocking uh, but then right. if you kind of look deeper beyond the surface into the grave of what that is, then they're going to be like, oh, shit, that's like that's based on this crazy fucking film, you know. Right on, man. Well, dude, I, I, I don't like to classify things into a lot of subcategories, but I, I'm going to in this one case just because I'm curious what kind of horror do you guys like to, I guess, like the most and like to create from the most? Is it the campy, you know, uh, is it the nightmare on Elm streets or the Jason Voorhees stuff, or is it, uh, you know, more just like gruesome horror, the saw or hostile or that type of stuff. I mean, what, what kind of horror do you guys kind of create from? Well, you know, being 176 years old myself, uh, I like a lot of the classic films. Uh, okay. I'm a huge Vincent Price fan, so things like the original, you know, Dr. Fives, uh, The Blob, things like that really got me personally into horror. I also go for the 80s schlock. I'm a huge slasher fan. Um because of my age, I, I, you know, the new, the new generation tells me about films. Like, have you seen this? And I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about, but I also like to educate myself based sure. on keeping the, the genre strong. And, you know, it's those, the young kids are going to be the generation, the next generation of this shit. So what they think is cool, even if I don't, I got to kind of wrap my head around it and educate myself on it. You know what I mean? So, um, so I think I can't speak for the rest of the band because they've all got their own tastes. But I would say, you know, zombie films obviously are pretty big in our repertoire. Sure. Um, you know, we were friends with George A. Romero uh, before he passed away, and he actually endorsed our show and thought it was really cool what we were doing. Um, so, you know, the uh, anything that has to do with, with undead and whether it's, you know, uh, along a serious note, like more current things like the remake of 30 days a night or something like that, or, uh, like trained abuse on those an incredible movie. Um, but then obviously, you know, zombie films like, uh, like return of living dead or zombie or dawn of the dead, you know, that whole franchise, everything like we 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 truly love it all i can't i can't discredit anything uh thousands and thousands of movies you know one for any mood that i'm in right on but it does I, I, i'm gonna argue this a little bit it does have to drive you crazy when some of these big budget remakes come out that are just garbage you know the rob zombie you know, stuff or the you know that sort of stuff you know, I think with uh, with the emergence of streaming television and film and services, there's just you know y you go on your your Zulu or your your fan flicks or whatever, and you you right. you know there's a million movies to watch, 
uh, there's, you know, one for, you know, uh, there's a horror movie for eight year olds. There's a horror movie for 80 year olds, which is cool. Uh, sure. and I have to, again, respect anybody, whether it's Rob Zombie or whatever for, you know, doing their, what they think is right to keep the genre going. Uh, and because I'm such an old fart, uh, you know, I'm often not, uh, exposed to a lot of the, the newer horror and things that are happening. But, you know, uh, they're within those, the remakes, which I think is what we hear about the most because that's what Hollywood sure. pours all of their cash into. There's actually a lot of, you know, movie, new movies that are original with cool ideas, uh, playing on things. We just watched, uh, talk, uh, talk to me the other day, uh, which I wasn't, I, I have no expectations, obviously when I'm watching new sure. things, but, but you know, I was, I was well impressed. It was, it was fun and it had me on the edge of my seat. And, uh, and so I think, I think you can't, judge a book by its cover and you know there's uh like damien leon creating terrifier you know uh you know that uh the fact that art the clown is is now so iconic that image um you know he's almost next to like jason and dare i say freddy or whatever but but you know we've still got uh, i know it's an 80s thing a 50s thing horror that it's stemming from but the fact that in 2020 whatever the hell it is it's still going so strong who knows who knows what's gonna happen man and some remakes you know some remakes that came out especially in the early 2000s uh you know like uh, the hills have eyes or um oh what's another good one well that one comes to mind particularly mm. like those you know those are actually good films you sure. know so so yeah don't uh, you know never say never as i right always say I hear you. And, you know, one of the things, and I'm curious if this leads to opportunity for a band like Blood Opera. There's so much more like independent filmmakers making horror, you know, stuff like uh, Her Name is Krista or Lamageddon or stuff like that yeah. that is out there now. Does that actually open doors for you guys to, you know, because they're always looking for soundtrack and, and bands yep. that can make that kind of, you know, creepy yet fun music. Of course. And, you know, there's obviously uh, composers whose actual career is to write film uh, sure. sort of scores for these films. Uh, but then, you know, we have been in soundtracks before, new movies coming up. Um, we were, we've been asked for, you know, our merch for the, if there's like a rock and roll kid or something in a new film, they'll be like, oh, can I get some blood opera merch? And, you know, so we're, we're, super thankful for being involved in kind of, if I dare say the kind of B horror indie horror, uh, world, because you know, that's, that's, that's what we do. The Hollywood seems kind of so far, uh, fetched to us that, you know, because there's just millions and billions of dollars put into remakes that nobody really watches sometimes. And, you know, I always say, uh, you know, to the band and stuff, the, the movies that are going to be remembered, like we remember things from the 80s and how iconic they are. I, I don't think they're going to be the big blockbuster now Hollywood films. I think something that's going to be remembered is a is an indie film, is a smaller idea with the smaller budget executed correctly that, you know, so that it has a long lasting impact because you watch something once and you forget about it um and also because there's just so much tv and mm -hmm. shit to choose from i can't you know i can't even choose when i'm on a streaming service what to watch i would honestly rather a smaller kind of curated selection of things to choose sure. from uh and so i you know i think it's going to be it's just going to be a, an idea that whether or not it's completely original or something like talk to me that is kind of an old idea built on with you know uh new forthcoming that I think like, you know, who knows what's going to happen in the next, in the next 10, 15 years with horror. We're, we're excited about it. And yeah, put right. us on your soundtrack. Put us on your soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. Do that. Most, most importantly, put blood <laughs> opera on your soundtrack. Exactly. You heard well, that. That's right. Well, dude, let's dig into songs in the key of hell because it, it's a, it's such a, I hate to use the term fun. And this is the second time I'm using it because it doesn't sort of fit what you guys do but it for for me is just kind of a classic 80s metal head but also as a fan of horror i i like what you guys are doing better than a lot of the other more bigger established bands 
in the similar genre, like the Lordies of the world and whatnot, because okay. your music's a lot more catchy, you know, and, and, and that, that to me is, a that has to be hard to do given the themes that you guys are doing. No, I mean, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, like I said, just like there are so much, so many films and things to choose from these days. There's, there's more music, I think, than I, than I've ever seen before in my life. Uh, you know, I can't, Spotify tells me to listen to so many new bands and I'm excited about it. But like you said, a lot of it is, is similar sounding. Uh, and a lot of it kind of, you know, goes back to it's a resurgence of everything these days, right? So, mm -hmm. 80s metal is back with a vengeance. Uh, you know, thrash metal is like bigger than it's ever been before. Black metal is fucking huge. Uh, I can never read yeah. those, you know, the band names or whatever, but I kind of, <laughs> right. I kind of like to try and read them while I'm taking a shit or whatever. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the, I think, uh, I think a lot of the stuff stems back to, um, you gotta have any, anyone that's going to get noticed has to do something different. And mm -hmm. people can say, you know, compare us to, we've been compared to Lordy and Guar and things like that, which I take personally as a compliment. Uh, cause you know, sure. these fans have, uh, regardless of if people like their music or not, they've been, they've been doing this and keeping the kind of monster metal, if I dare say, uh, genre alive. Uh, okay. you know, we just opened for Guar and it was one of the best experience experiences of our lives. I think there was more blood in that building than I've <laughs> ever seen before. There were dumpsters after the show, just dripping with the people working there, just shaking their heads like, Oh God, who's going <laughs> to clean this shit up? You know, but, um, but you know, I we we actually an interesting thing about Blood Opera is that besides being metal fans and punk fans, uh, we're also pop fans. So okay. you know, a lot of the music that we listened to was uh, kind of eighties pop rock soundtracks uh, from some of our favorite films uh, that you know people metal fans will look and go, oh god, like that's not heavy enough. That's kind of like pussy metal or whatever. And a lot of that stuff to me is not only vocally creative and amazing, but the guitar hooks stick with you. If even if there's not three guitars, there's one guitar hook in there. That's all you need. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, um, because they were catchy they there was whether it was the intro or the hook or the bridge uh or you know a killer solo uh like it's stuff that sticks with you and you need some you need earworms right these days i don't even mm -hmm. think half of the half of the kids listen to the words that are in the fucking music they just True. care if it if it's if it's got their head bopping you know what i mean and if they're driving their parents car and you know, not paying attention to anything, but the music that's happening. And so I go, it, it doesn't matter what it is. You know, the A, E, D, G, and B7 rule that I always say is like, you know, you use those couple of chords and, and you mix them up and you gotta, you gotta catch these songs. So, um, that being said, I think bands like Lordy have, you know, they have huge followings. They've, they've sure. kind of, they help pave the way for, for things that we do. Uh, you know, we look up to them obviously as, as, uh, monster metal guys ourselves. Um, but we also don't want to do what's been done before. We want to create, right. we want to create a new sound. And I think with this album, um, although some of the songs we wrote kind of before the pandemic, some of the songs were written after, um, we're still new. So we're still kind of finding what we like to play and what our fans like to hear. Uh, but right. you know, uh, it's, you, you never, you can never set, you can never be like, Hey, we can't do that. We can't do that. We can't do that. You know, uh, there's no fucking rules to this. And so we just want to make songs that people hear want and don't go, Oh yeah, that was cool. I, I want them to go, fuck, what was that song by the band that looks really stupid? And where's all that shit? Like, what, what was that? Cause that's when I was a kid listening to bands like Guar, you know, when I was a little baby zombie, like the, right. the, the the songs themselves i didn't know even the lyrics of them or whatever but something like sick of you like i heard that i heard that fucking chord progression like for years in my head you know what i mean it was just right. like so catchy and uh i think that's what i think that's what's really important you know those those earworms
Right on, man. Well, dude, let's dig into the record a little bit. Let's. Um, I always try to start with my favorite song on the record. For you guys, it would be a waste of a good suffering. Okay. Great tune, fun, um, super. Like you said, earworm. That's an ear snake. I'll just put it that way. That's a big one. <laughs> Thank uh, you. You know, tell me a little bit about that song. Sure. So, waste of good suffering. Uh, with the lyrics alone, you can maybe tell that it's based on uh, Hellraiser. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're huge Clyde Barker fans here. Um, you know, we, we, uh, met a few people in the film, including Doug himself. Uh, there's, there's such a love for that franchise. Yes. Even the third film, uh, there's actually, I think there's like 14 Hellraisers in total that I don't, that a lot of people don't know, but maybe 12, I may be messing with that. I obviously haven't seen the last like five. Uh, <laughs> but so the the cool thing about that song is that it's one of our older tracks actually that we released on the first ep uh and we wanted to re-record it with a better sound kind of a better oomph and, and the new guys in the band because half of the band are are kind of new new zombies anyway so we really want to revisit it uh and every lyric from it every single word is ripped from the script of that film so you know whether it's you can run and you or you can't hide we'll search through heaven and hell to find you know that that's written that's taken ripped right from the script um you know a waste of good suffering obviously like is repeated uh by pinhead in that film um we actually did uh we did a little music video for that film uh right when the pandemic hit it was supposed to feature everybody in the band but then because of everything going on it could only feature one of us so right. i i uh i we i got a director and a camera guy with me who was actually the same guy because we were we had to social distance and all that stuff and right. so it was just him and i uh lighting candles up in an abandoned apartment in the house that i used to live in uh and we were just you know we just kind of went for it uh which you can find that video on youtube a waste of good suffering uh but you know uh yeah one of the one of the older songs like that one with uh, as well as fight to survive um that's based on the hills have eyes you know just uh kind of that's like what blood opera is at its core and that being said we wrote those songs like 2018 i think so to okay. finally put them on a record uh you know we're so excited about that but uh but yeah check it out waste of good suffering that, that's a good one. The other one, which plays into one of my all-time favorite movies, The Fog, The Ballad of Father Malone. Yeah. Just, a, just a great song based off of a great, great underrated movie. You know, I think John Carpenter films, if you're, dare I say, a real horror fan, uh, you know, they, they have a place in all of our hearts, uh, whether it's obviously Halloween or The Thing or whatever, like, those films were so visceral and so just the ideas themselves were so frightening. People can look at something like the fog now and be like, Oh, that's not scary. But you know, I, I watched that movie and it's as scary as the, the day oh, yeah. that I watched it in like 1990. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. uh, we also, we were lucky enough to have Adrian Barbeau be down to lend her voice to the track, which was really cool. She's, so gorgeous still she actually uh makes her own music as well which is uh, not a lot okay. of people know she has a adrian right. barbeau has a spotify check it out uh, okay and so you know again just uh, another song where the lyrics were lifted um from the actual movie itself actually the you know the the beginning of it starts with uh the you know uh uh here it comes. The fog is rolling around the band. Our blood is flowing. Is all that you see or see that can be seen within a dream? I'm messing that up. Seen within a dream. Uh, but, you know, everything is just take it ripped right from the script of that film. Right. And, uh, again, an older Blood Upper song that was actually written pre-pandemic uh, that we were able to kind of bring to fruition in this with Adrian uh, Adrian's help um and recorded blissfully and actually that one live people have said is really cool because you know we fill the whole place with fog and then we got this right. ghoul coming out with a big gold cross and he killed me with it and you got to come see it you got to come see it well when, when can when and where can people come and see you are there tour plans so there's no tour right now which we're kind of upset about you know because we went out with a bang in october obviously we've got a 
people see this, you know, gorgeous face of mine and they go, oh, Halloween <laughs> band, Halloween, great. In October, you know, it, it's lovely to be asked to play gigs whenever, but we have no problem in October playing gigs. We have to turn them down in October. Um, right. But, you know, uh, we've got, we do have some things in the works. We're going to be going to uh, Quebec, which is really, really cool, and Ottawa as well this year. So stay tuned for that. We obviously play Toronto as a hometown quite a bit. Uh, sure. And towns like Hamilton are really, really close. So we're going to be back there this year. So keep an eye out. Uh, but, you know, we don't want to give, we don't want to play every week. We don't want to play every month. We want to, we want to write, we're still writing new songs because we've got five keys that are coming out the key of death was the first one so you know we're trying to keep the blood flowing here and keep the ideas going so any of our downtime we've already got you know uh three songs written for for whatever comes out next um okay. but yeah we're you know big things on the horizon for us is going to be some more comic cons this year we might even be going to california depending on if i can leave the country or not so so <laughs> you know uh keep your eyes and ears and butthole peeled because uh you know we're coming for you there you go. Well, dude, where can people go to keep up with you guys and to buy merch and to do all that stuff? They can uh, go anywhere on the world wide webs. Just type us in. Uh, you know, we've had a bunch of cool reviews happen. We we're on uh, metalsucks.net. Uh, we're going to be in Room Org Magazine uh, in the coming months. Um, you can check us out, obviously, on your Instagram and your Facebook. Uh, follow Blood Opera Inc. It stands for Incorporated uh, because we are. And so anywhere, YouTube, check us out. Obviously, on yeah, anything from Spotify to uh, uh, Apple Music to Deezer. The new album is on there. Bandcamp, if you want to buy our merch. Uh, head there we've got some sick new shirts um you know and we're coming out with with more and more stuff we're we're we've just put our uh album for sale in a few record stores locally uh it's going to be available in hamilton and toronto anywhere in the gtha uh don't call me asking if i can drop one off to you because i ain't got the time uh <laughs> but you know come buy your hard your hard-earned cash spend it on the dead we promise it'll be a fun time and come to one of our shows when we're when we when we come to your town to desecrate it and eat you alive that's right well dude let's wrap it up with the gates of hell lyric video um one more time the band is blood opera the song the album is songs in the key of hell and um tell us a little bit about this about this song to wrap it up so the gates of hell it's that it's songs in the key of death but the gate the gates of hell it's because you like that song so much that you're getting that yes so so <laughs> the gates of hell uh was actually a newer track uh, written fully by myself uh, because I love this film so much. Uh, we are obviously full, huge Fulgi fans, uh, you know, House by the Cemetery, uh, any kind of Italian film, uh, you know, where Demons was huge for us. Um, Baba fans, obviously, over here as well. Uh, but The Gates of Hell was, was based on the film City of the Living Dead, uh, also known as The Gates of Hell. And again, uh, another cool thing is that the lyrics are ripped right out of it so you know the dead shall rise by the suicide of a priest that's for real so hanging priests everywhere uh but you know uh we were able to not only write a really catchy hook that seems to uh have a big kind of connection with the fans also when i pull up my you know my three foot cock and spray blood on everyone when we end the <laughs> set with that but um, we were also able to get uh, Maruzio Gurini, who's a friend of mine uh, and has been for a while. We've known him through the horror community and stuff and because Goblin, you know, was a huge influence on myself and the rest of the band. Uh, you know, as Italian soundtrack horror gods, I think, you know, everything from fucking, you know, Suspiria to what, like, every single soundtrack that they worked on was just so, like, you know, it's back to that kind of catchy thing. You hear those songs and you're just like, what is that? Like, I, I remember that chord progression or I remember that that weird, eerie sound that was like, you know, it's not like soundtracks today where it's either it's either kind of a, you know, like an indie pop band or it's literally just pianos like Goblin was was metal, man. Like they, you know, they they did the eerie soundtrack stuff, but then they came in with like a bang and like electric guitars and everything. So uh, sadly, the original Goblin isn't around anymore. 
uh, Claudio Simonetti is now uh, doing his version of Goblin, which is still amazing. We saw them. They were fantastic. Uh, but yeah, Gates of Hell just kind of, it was the first song um, that we released off the new album. Uh, and it did really well on the uh, the fake metal indie charts or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, and, you know, uh, fucking listen to it, man, because that's uh, it's a cool song. It's got some some highs and some lows in there. And we're really we're really proud of it, you know. And uh, and yeah, those gates of hell are opening right now. If you can't tell where the world is going, they're fucking opening, man. So <laughs> I think they're wide open. I don't think they're, they're like they're wide, they're wide <laughs> open, you know, so we're, we're trying to we're trying to close them. That's uh, right. Per se, but uh, you know, we're 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 proud of that, and it's it's also people have not we've been told before from some of our older fans uh, that you know the Gates of Hell is like that's a like a new sound for us. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a bit more modern. We've got some younger guys in the band that listen to you know they 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 teach Rip and I uh, Rip Junk and I about you know the, where heavy metal is going, and uh, there's more bands out there than just Skid Row and Cinderella. Uh, you right. know who. who who aren't out there anymore but that's what we go to listen to you know what i mean uh but right. so so kind of faster core progressions um heavier like that double kick just flying through there and we we love it man we fucking love it right and on. i love well, let's let i love it well let's make sure everybody loves it let's play it now it is the gates of hell from the album songs in the key of death i got it right that time yeah. and it is blood opera right here on chris Aker presents yeah What's going on, everybody? Chris Aiken here from every show you've ever watched in your entire life. And I'm here to talk about every book that you should be reading in your entire life, including this one. Call Me Chris. It is my second my second serious book that I ever did. It is about my burn accident and my time getting through that. It's a, it's a real uh, page turner. <laughs> it's, it's not the happiest read in the world, I will tell you that. It definitely deals with a lot of the anger and fear and all the other shit that I was going through at the time but it is a cool book and if you like the survivor story type stuff um, this is the book for you because I definitely tell in detail what happened to me and how I got through it so check it out call me Chris available now at chrisaken.net or on Amazon just look up call me Chris and my last name or else you'll find 15 other ones but if you look up call me Chris and Chris Aiken you will find it all right Call me Chris. It's a great book. Get it today. 